Hi there, Journey family. Nicole Myers here. Thanks for stopping by and taking some time out of your day to listen to some words from the Lord and hopefully gain some encouragement from Scripture. Um, over this next couple of weeks, you'll see my face a couple of times, and I thought that since we're in this really interesting time right now, not only as a community or a Madison community itself, a state, a nation, the entire planet, like we're all in this really interesting place right now. And we're learning what it is to reintegrate ourselves back into community, whether that's in person or figuring out how to do that, you know, wisely online. <sighs> but I figured that now would be as good a time as any to talk about encouragement through community. So we're going to be going through a couple of different scriptures each week. And I just wanted to take some time right now to lay some groundwork and kind of talk about what it is to find encouragement in community. So get yourselves a Bible, a journal, some fun pencils, and just take a moment to still yourself to be with the Lord in this moment. So if you have your Bible with you, you're going to want to turn to 1 Thessalonians. You're going to be in chapter 3, and we're going to be reading verses 11 through 13. So as I was saying before, we're in this really interesting time period as a community in general where we're all in different places emotionally, mentally, spiritually, but we have so much hope to look forwards to. We are in this time where we're hearing more and more that people are getting vaccinated, that businesses are opening up, that things are slowly but surely starting to return to some semblance of normal, quote unquote. We're starting to be able to get back into community and see each other again. And so, Weirdly enough, because our God is fantastic and knows just what our hearts need, he has a lot of communities that sort of mirror that exact image throughout different portions of the New Testament. And Paul is excellent at writing letters to all of these communities and making sure that they know that they are loved and cared for by leadership, that they are loved and cared for for each other, that they are a place where the Lord can send his spirit so that it can thrive amongst his people. So, in Thessalonica, they're in this really interesting period where there were a ton of people that just came to the Lord, and Paul had to, like, bounce. He didn't have time to sit with them, and so they're kind of scrambling. They're like, well, what do we do now? How do we find encouragement in this time to continue going and continue building the kingdom of God here on earth? And so Paul is writing this really lovely letter to them, telling them that he loves them, that he's encouraged by the fact that they're doing good work, and he spends some time in this portion of chapter 3 discussing with them what their hearts are supposed to look like in order for community to function best. So, if you will turn to chapter 3 and follow along, that would be great. So it says this, and this is, this is again 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses one or 11 through 13. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Ugh, you just like gather so much of what Paul feels and how much love he has in his heart for fellow brothers and sisters just within these three small verses. And the big thing here is that he tells us a couple of things about what our heart is to look like as we hope towards the future. And obviously for us, we have our small hopes here and now, the hopes of being able to see each other again, the hopes of being able to go outside. It's finally becoming spring again, which is fantastic. And we're all so excited about that. But we have a greater hope in general as Christians, the hope of the coming king, which is so exciting. But in order to keep experiencing what it's like to be encouraged and to, to feel the blessing of the Lord, it is really important for us to have our hearts in a very specific posture and to continue to foster that energy every single day. <laughs> and it does take a lot of time and effort, I will admit. But Paul says some really, really sweet things in here that are instrumental for us as believers. So in verse 11, he says, Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. So at this point in time, he was traveling and he wanted to be able to come back to help the church. 
And the big thing that we can learn from that is that there is so much hope in community. That Paul, even amidst his travels and his time of attempting to go and spread the ministry of the Lord in other places, he still found so much hope in building groundwork and continuing to be there and present for all of the people who he was there with originally. And granted, he was doing this at many different places in many different cities, but he found so much encouragement in the church at Thessalonica that he wanted to make sure that he could come back to experience the fruit of what he was planting. We can experience encouragement in community by continuing to check in with those who are in your congregation, continuing to check in with those who are your neighbors, making sure that you are fostering a good relationship with people and providing for their needs and making sure that you're leading them well in the ways that the Lord would want you to. And obviously right now, we're still in that limbo period of, you know, being socially distanced, but also having so much hope and being able to like see each other outside if we can. Like there's so many different factors to that, but there are ways that you can encourage your neighbor well. There are ways that you can continue to contact people within your community to make sure that you are letting them know that there is someone who loves them very dearly. You, obviously, and the Lord. Making sure that they know that there is love abounding to look out for them as they continue to look forward to the future. And believe it or not, as you start to do that, you'll see that there are so many people that want to do the same exact thing for you. So that's that in verse 11. And then you see in verse 12, May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and everyone else, just as ours does for you. So within your small pocket of people that you've been curating this entire time that we've been in this pandemic, it is so important continue to continue to do outpourings of love for one another making sure that you are letting people know that you care immensely. Not just in the manner of checking to see what seeds have been planted, but caring for people's needs, making sure that they're provided for. We're going to be talking about it in our James study coming up here, but what good is it to say to someone like, cool, I hope you're clothed and fed and not actually clothe and feed them? We have to make sure that our hearts are in a space where we're, where we're willing to serve and give and actively be there with our community in order to make sure that they know that they are loved. We have to care for each other in this interim period. Obviously the pandemic interim period, but also the interim in between now and when the Lord returns. We have to make sure that we are putting our hearts in a servant's posture in order to experience who the Lord is and gain a more full picture of his character. So that's verse 12. Then in verse 13, it says, May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when the Lord Jesus comes with all of his holy ones. So while you are in this time loving each other well, it is also important for everyone in your community to go to the Lord together, to worship together, to pray with each other, to engage with scripture together, to lament beside one another and grieve beside one another. All of these things where you are bringing your petitions to the Lord are important for you to be able to experience community fully and experience the encouragement of who the Lord is during this time. That's the really beautiful thing about Jesus is he never wanted us to do this alone. So he gave us community so that we could continue to experience his encouragement here on earth during this waiting period. So, lots of information, lots of different ways that you can do that, and it's going to look different for everyone. But I strongly encourage you to seek out those in your community, whether that's your little COVID bubble that you've created, or even beginning to serve the greater Madison community. Find people's needs, serve one another well, continue to love each other as the Lord would love you, and bring people together to worship the Lord, no matter what that looks like. I am so encouraged by you as my community, and I am so looking forward to making sure that we all are seeking the Lord together.